Yep. Okay, so I think it's time to start the talk. So today we have Masaki Waga from Kyoto University, and he's going to talk about online quantitative time pattern matching with simmering valid weighted automata. And yes, he's unmuted now. So please start. Okay, so hello. And uh, I think good afternoon in many, for many people, but like me, yeah. I mean, I, I'm in evening because I'm in Japan. But uh, so today I'm going to talk about online quantitative time and pattern matching with simmering valued weighted automata. This is based on the paper at formats 2019. And uh, this work is on monitoring. So this quantitative time and pattern matching is a kind of monitoring problem. So first of all, I'm going to talk about this quantitative time and pattern matching problem. So it is important to assure the safety of cyber physical systems because they are usually safety critical. For example, self-driving cars are safety critical because an issue on a self-driving car can cause a car crash, which might kill people. It can uh, damage some objects. And uh, like basically, it is dangerous if uh, such a car crash happens. So it, I mean, these systems are safety critical. So we want to assure the safety of these systems, but it's not limited to cars, but also airplanes or medical devices and or many server physical systems are safety critical. So it is important to assure the safety of these systems. And there are many methods to assure the safety. And one of them is to use monitoring based on formal specifications. So the rough idea of monitoring is something like this. First, we write a specification of the monitoring in a formal language. This is not something formal, but uh, I mean, yeah, we usually write such a specification in a formal language, such as temporal logic, a kind of regular expression, automata, and so on. And we feed such a specification to a monitor, and the monitor automatically observed the system behavior. And once a violation of the given specification is detected, the monitor says that this execution is dangerous or uh, it find, I mean, a safety violation is found. So this is the main concept of monitoring, mon specification-based monitoring. And there are many problem formulation of monitoring problem. But one of them is timed pattern matching. In timed pattern matching, the, the inputs are the signal, which is observed, and the specification for the pattern matching. And the goal is to find all the matching interval in the signals. In other words, the intervals where this specification, the pattern specification, matches with the, that sub-signal. So for example, in this signal, uh, this interval matches this, this spe pattern specification because here the RPM is greater than 4,000, which is this threshold, and the length of this interval is longer than one second. So this is one matching, but such a matching also happens for this interval, but also this interval matches with this pattern specification. And in such a way, there are in general infinitely and actually continuously many such matching intervals. And uh, the result of time and pattern matching is to find all the all such matching intervals. So this sounds a little bit tricky or something intractable, but actually, uh, it is known that the result of time and pattern matching can be represented by a finite union of convex polyhedra, especially a special class of convex polyhedra called zones. So by using such a, a nice representation, we can effectively solve such a no, time and pattern matching problem. But here we observe that the uh, degree of the satisfaction is different at uh, each areas, each subsignals. So, for example, for this subsignal, we find that this difference from the threshold 4000 is relatively large, while here uh, the signal value is close to the, the, this 
uh, threshold. So in that sense, we can say, at, at least we want to say that this subsignal matches more than this subsignal. In other words, the satisfaction degree should be larger, or in other words, it is it robustly satisfies this pattern specification or such a thing. So we want to do such a quantitative discussion uh, rather than qualitative discussion, like it matches or not. So this is the idea of this quantitative time and pattern matching problem. So here, the inputs are the same, signals and pattern specifications, but the goal is not just to find all the matching interval, but also we want to find the satisfaction degree. So it's like for this interval, since this gap from the specification, oh, uh, gap from the threshold is relatively large. So for example, the degree of the satisfaction can be something like 2000, while for this second interval, this gap is relatively small. So it can be something like the degree of the satisfaction is 500 or something at least smaller than this value. So this is the main idea of the quantitative time pattern matching problem. And again, this might look a little bit hard to, to solve because now we have to, I mean, find all of such, uh, I mean, for, for each interval, we have to assign one value. And uh, now we have uh, uh, infinitely many areas, infinitely many intervals, and uh, these values are also, I mean, rational or real valued values. But actually, it is okay for our specification. So uh, the more precise problem setting for us is something like this. So the input is not an arbitrary signal, but a real valued or rational valued, but piecewise constant signals. So it cannot be very smooth signal, but it's like each pieces of the signals are constant valued. And Another important point uh, in practice, or like a from, from algorithmic viewpoint, one of the most important thing is that because of this piecewise constantness, the possible signal values are only finitely many. I mean, there's no infinitely often signal switching here. So this is something important for the algorithm viewpoint, but uh, we uh, assume that the given, no, the given signal is such a piecewise constant signal. And uh, yeah, the second input is the pattern specification, which is basically the same as what I mentioned before. But the output is formally a function which assigns a satisfaction degree to each subsignal. And for example, given the signal sigma, which is this one, and the pattern specification w, the output which is this function assigns this uh, interval to the satisfaction degree minus 12, which is, uh, which is no, minus 20, which is uh, the satisfaction degree of this subsignal from 2 to 4.0. And it is the same for the other subsignals, like this value 40 is 40. Uh, is the subsignal of from 6.5 to 7.8, for example. Yeah. And uh, for this problem setting, yeah. So this is a function and uh, the domain is uh, interval. So it's uh, not really finite and the value is also uh, rational or real value. So it looks really complicated to solve it. But thanks to the thanks to the finiteness of the possible values in this signal, we can actually represent such uh, uh, the, the result of this quantitative time and pattern matching again by using finitely many convex polyhedra with weights. I mean, the value, the, the, the satisfaction degree for each area, roughly speaking. So for example, for this example, uh, the subsignal from 2.0 to 4, which is this one, uh, the value is minus 20, which is represented by this value, which is this minus 20. And for the, this subsignal from 6.5 to 7.8, which uh, 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 whose value is 40, uh, this is 
let me this 4D is this color here. So yeah, so this is quantitative time and pattern matching problem. We uh, we compute the satisfaction degree for each sub-signal, basically. So this is quantitative time and pattern matching. And in this title, we also say that the um, online algorithm for monitoring, and this is something like this. So in monitoring, there are offline monitoring and online monitoring. And for on online monitoring, we compute the value incrementally as we observe, as the monitor observes the prefix of the observed log or signal. So which, which works in such a way. So this monitor observes each pieces of the observations or each prefix of the signals. And for uh, when, when this monitor observed this prefix from zero to 6.2, it outputs this initial part of the, the whole result, but uh, it uh, incrementally add such a result. I mean, it, it incrementally returns partial results. And in the end, it returns this full result. And uh, this is a really important feature for the monitoring uh, in practice, because if we uh, can do this online monitoring, we can do a monitoring of a system running. Otherwise, uh, if for the offline monitoring uh, problem, uh, offline monitoring algorithm, because the full log, full signal is required at the beginning of the, the uh, algorithm running. So yeah, it's hard to use for a system uh, currently running. And the third part of this title is sampling based weighted automata. So in order to do online monitoring for that uh, quantitative time and pattern matching, we use this time and symbolic weighted automata. This is the formalism we introduced in this paper. So, uh, so this is a kind of automaton, uh, an extension of time and automata and weighted automata. So, uh, for the online monitoring, it is known that such an automata structure is uh, very useful. It is because uh, usually if we want to do a monitoring with temporal logic formula or regular expression formula or, and so on, we usually want to, to have a, uh, the usual algorithm should be something like first we construct a um, the result for the sub-signal and by using the inductive definition of the uh, formula, we somehow combine the results to obtain the full result. It, it is something uh, uh, usual for the monitoring directly with such a logical formula, but it's not really useful. I mean, it, me, it, it makes the algorithm online, no, offline and uh, the automata's graph structure works better for the online monitoring. And also uh, this, I, I will explain it later, but uh, because this time symbolic weighted automata semantics is parameterized with semrings, which is much like the usual WFS weighted finite automata. And this genericity of uh, semring uh, let us uh, capture, I mean, let, I mean, our algorithm can handle uh, multiple algorithm, no, multiple quantitative semantics because of this uh, parameterized, uh, I mean, semi-ring parameterized quantitative semantics. So the summary of our contribution is like this. So first we introduced timed symbolic weighted automata, the uh, automata which combines timed automata with or uh, weighted automata. And we gave online algorithm for quantitative time and pattern matching problem. And our experiment results show the scalability of our method with some uh, re relatively reasonable assumption. Okay, and there are several related works on this timed pattern matching directions of works for monitoring, both offline and online, and also both qualitative to quantitative. And compared with this qualitative and online algorithm, our work can be seen that like in the previous work, 
it is based on the time of automata and reachability analysis. And now we use it for time of automata plus signal constraints and also weights, which is from that weighted automata concept. And also compared with this offline quantitative time of pattern matching work, like one difference is like on online monitoring capable or not. But from another viewpoint, it's also like they also they can capture only one semantics, which is like widely used robust semantics, which is um, like one of the most natural extension of the usual uh, Boolean qualitative semantics to the quantitative uh, real valued or rational valued semantics. But uh, our algorithm works for any uh, quantitative semantics defined by using semring valued weight function. And also, I mean, semring is something related to this semantics definition, but basically the previous wa uh, algorithm works for only one semantics, but our one works for more general semantics. Okay, so then let's move to the technical part of uh, this talk. So first, I'm going to talk about this semantic, no, no, this formalism part, timed symbolic weighted automata. This is timed automata with signal constraints plus weight function to define the quantitative semantics. So a timed automaton is an NFA, non-deterministic finite automaton with clock variables to capture the timing constraints between transitions. For example, for this automaton, uh, by using this clock variable C, uh, we can capture the such a uh, timing constraints that like, because C is reset here and this transition has this guard, C is smaller than 10. So because of this, uh, this automaton uh, has the constraints such that this, tra no, uh, this transition can be, can be used only within 10 time units after this transition. So such a timing trans no such a timing constraints between transitions can be represented by using uh, clock variables. This is the main concept of timed automaton. And because we want to do a monitoring of uh, signals, we use such a signal constraints. I mean, we use such a labels on each locations. And each labels are the constraints on the signal values. So uh, roughly speaking, when we are at this location, the signal value V must be smaller than 15. And it is similar for this one. And because uh, like uh, we sometimes want to say that uh, we don't care the signal values. And in that case, we write uh, top here. And uh, this is in general, uh, uh, con conjunctive constraints on these inequalities on the signal values. And uh, in order to define the quantitative semantics, we use weight function. So this pair of uh, this automaton structure plus this weight function is the time the symbolic weighted automaton, which is what we use to describe the specification, the monitor the specification. Yeah, so, so this automata structure is for the, the transitions or some constraints and the, 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 yeah, the weight is defined by the quantitative semantics. It is defined by this weight function. And this weight function is a function from uh, constraints on the signal values at the location and uh, and this is the sequence of the signal values, which we observed at that location. And uh, given these two informations, the weight function assigns a semring value, which is the, tr the weight at the of the transition from a location, which is labeled with these constraints. And, uh, and, and uh, in that case, uh, in, in the case that we observed this a sequence of signal values at that location after the latest transitions in that automaton. Yeah. So this is the weight function. And uh, so then let's see how the semantics is defined for this 
uh, time symbolic weighted automata and, and for the signals. So first, that uh, this uh, weight function is defined in such a way that, so yeah, so first of all, we use weighted time transition systems, weighted TTS to define the semantics of this time symbolic weighted automata, which is similar to the definition of the semantics of a time automata with timed transition systems. And uh, for, the, for the timed automata, um, configuration of the time transition system consists of uh, uh, location and the clock variation, but we also use the absolute time and the sequence of the signal values after the latest discrete transitions. So, yeah, these two informations are new for our uh, weighted TTS. And the continuous transitions, which is for the time elapse at this configuration, is the same as the usual time elapse for the timed automata. So we are at the same location and the signal, no, the clock variations, which assigns the value for each clock variable, is uh, incremented by the, the elapsed time. I mean, because at this transition, we, the, the length of the time elapsed is 3.0. So we add these, all of the clock variable, all of the value of the uh, clock variables by uh, three. And it is the same for this absolute time. And for this fourth element of the tuple, we append this U prime, which is the sequence of the signal values we observed in this 3.0 uh, time elapse of time, no, time units of time elapse. Yeah. And we do the same thing for other uh, time lengths of the time elapse. For example, for lengths uh, 4.0 time unit, 5.0 time units, 6.0 time units, 6.1 time units, 6.11 time units, and so on. We have such continuous transitions. And for discrete transitions, uh, this is also something really similar to the discrete transitions of the timed transition systems for timed automata. Uh, it, I mean, for this location and the clock variations, it is exactly the same. And uh, the, uh, the absolute time does not change because we have no time elapse. And uh, because this fourth element is for the sequence of the signal values after the latest discrete transition, and this is the latest discrete transition, and we have uh, no observation after that. So basically, we reset this fourth element here. And we assign a weight for these discrete transitions. And for that, we use this constraint the, the signal value constraint at this location L and this uh, sequence of the signal values observed after the latest discrete transition at this location L, which is this one. Yeah, and by give, feeding these two things to the weight function, we obtain the, the weight at this transition, at this discrete transition. And we do the same thing for each discrete transition. And now we defined a uh, weight for each transitions, for each discrete transition. But we, in order to obtain one value for um, automaton and the signal, we have to accumulate these values. And uh, we do an accumulation over a path and over all the paths on this weighted TTS. And it's something like this. So uh, let's consider one pass, which starts from this initial configuration, which shows that we are fast at this location L0, the initial location, and the signal, the value of the signal C is equal to zero, which is the initial config uh, condition. And because now we are at time zero, the, the absolute time is zero. And since we have no observation so far, so the fourth element is epsilon. So this is the initial configuration. And uh, let's say we do a time elapse of length 2.0 to go to this second location. And uh, because between this zero and 2.0, we observed this signal of value 7.0. So we append 
this uh, valuation uh, uh, in the end of this sequence epsilon, so which is this sequence. And at, from this configuration, we do a discrete transition to this second location L1. And uh, this time we feed this uh, constraint phi is smaller than 15. And this V is equal to seven, which is the observation at this uh, first part of the, I mean, uh, yeah, the first part of the, uh, the continuous transitions. So yeah, these values are fed, fed to this uh, uh, weight function and we obtain this weight for this discrete transition. And similarly, we do the time elapse of length 5.0. And this time between this 2.0 and 7.0, we observe these two signal values, 7.0 and 12. So we append these two values uh, at the end of this epsilon, the, the fourth element of the tuple. And from this configuration, we go to the, this uh, accepting location by doing this discrete transition. And this time, similarly, we feed this uh, constraint and this sequence of variations to the, to the weight to obtain this, uh, no, to the weight function to obtain this weight. So this is a path with the weights for each discrete transitions. And what we want to do to accumulate these weight values. And here we use this uh, all times operator of the same ring, which is for the Boolean same ring, this is uh, the conjunction, but for supreme same ring, it is infimum. And for other same rings, this is some other operators, but we do um, accumulation using this or times operator. And uh, we have many, and actually infinitely many possible these uh, passes. This is for example, because in the previous example, I showed, I mean, the first time elapse was uh, of length 2.0, but it can be the length, uh, the length can be, for example, 4.0. And uh, in general, it can be many other possible uh, delays or like in case, there are some other branching, yeah, the, the discrete transition can be something else. And uh, in such a way, there are in general, infinitely many possible passes, but uh, in order to accumulate these possible values over each path, the, for example, this value and this value, and similarly, many other values, we use O plus operator of the same ring, which is, for the Boolean setting, it is this junction, and for supreme same ring, it is supreme, um, and for other same rings, it can be something else. But this is how we uh, assign one value for the for the given signal and uh, uh, time symbolic weighted automaton. Yeah. So in summary, for our formalism. So the automata structure is defined by this time symbolic weighted, no, time symbolic automaton. And the weight for each transition is defined by this weight function plus the observation. And the, we do an accumulation of these weights over pass and over all the possible passes by this uh, all time, no, all plus and all times operators of the same ring. So this weight function defines something like one step semantics for the transitions, but it is accumulated by these two same ring operators. So this is the part of the formalism. And then I'm gonna talk about the algorithm to solve quantitative monitoring and quantitative time and pattern matching. The idea is to use zone construction, but we construct a weighted graph instead of the usual directed graph. So for the reachability analysis of time automata, uh, the, the, the issue is that there are infinitely many possible delays, which means that the size of the time transition system is infinite. So we cannot directly use BFS, spread first search or depth first search to do uh, the graph reachability analysis. So this looks something difficult, 
but it is known that we can represent all of these possible delays by using a special form of convex polyhedral zones like this. And because the, the, this zone is closed under this operation on the time elapse and the intersection with the guard and the reset operation on the, uh, to, to reset some of the clock values to zero, uh, all of these things are closed under the zones. And uh, by using that, we can reduce the reachability analysis in the infinite graph to a finite graph. So this is the like, really common workflow for the reachability analysis of timed automata. So yeah, and here we observe that the reachability analysis is nothing but the shortest distance problem over Boolean simmering. This is like this. So for one pass sequence of the, the, no, the configuration or a, one pass, no, one sequence of nodes to be a pass, all of the nodes must be connected. So it is something like conjunction over one pass, but for one configuration or for one node to be reachable from some node or the initial configuration for the reachability analysis of time automata, it is okay to have only one reachable path. So it's something like this junction. And actually the reachability can be represented by such a form of this junction and conjunction. But this is nothing but the shortest distance for samplings, especially for the Boolean sampling, because the shortest distance is defined by this uh, O plus and O times operators. O, and uh, yeah, because the O plus is this junction, no, uh, this junction and O times is conjunction for Boolean sampling. This is exactly the same as the reachability for the graph, for the graph with no weight. So the high level overview of our algorithm is like this. So in order to compute the qualitative algorithm of the, so for the qualitative monitoring, the, uh, the timed automaton, from the timed automaton by the zone construction, we obtain so-called zone graph, which is finite graph with no weight. And by the reachability analysis, uh, the quant that no, the qualitative semantics is obtained, which is the algorithm in the previous case for the qualitative time pattern matching or qualitative monitoring. But in our case, starting from this time symbolic weighted automaton and by the zone construction, we obtain again the finite graph, but it's a now weighted graph with the, and the weight is simmering valued. And by the sampling valued weighted this uh, sampling valued sampling weighted shortest distance problem, we obtain quantitative semantics for this time the symbolic weighted automata. So this is the high level overview of our algorithm. And uh, let's see how zone construction works for our setting. So this is the some kind of symbolic representation of our initial configuration. I mean, C is equal to zero and uh, the absolute time large T is equal to zero and so on. And first we do a time elapse to somewhere in this uh, interval from zero to 3.5, which is this one. And from this configuration, we can go to the second location here, which means we can do this discrete transition. And this weight is defined in the exactly the same way as the one I mentioned for weighted TTS, because yeah, we have this information of the location and this information of the, of the signal values we observed from the latest discrete transition. And from this configuration, we can still do a time elapse in this area, in this interval from zero to 3.5 because this transition is done somewhere between these two, I mean, between zero to 3.5. And now we go to time at exactly 3.5, and which means we do these discrete, no, these continuous transitions 
the time elapsed to 3.5. And it is also possible to go to this second location after these discrete, um, after these continuous transitions like this. And then we go to the, this interval from 3.5 to 7.0, which means we do these continuous transitions for time elapse. And again, we can also go to this uh, second location L1 from after this time elapse, which is this uh, discrete transition. And after this, we can also do this time elapse, this continuous transition. And finally, we go to, no, I mean, we go to the, the time exactly at 7.0, which means we do these continuous transitions. And now uh, we also go, can go to this third location L2 like this. And this is the end of this zone construction with bait. And uh, now we have uh, several paths to go to this accepting location. For example, this is, uh, yeah, th this is one path, but also this is another path. And uh, yeah, this is another path, but uh, by accumulating all of these values over passes, we, of, we can compute one value for this uh, zone, finite zone graph with weight. And our main theorem is the correctness of this algorithm. In other words, the shortest distance in that finite graph with finite zone graph with weight is the same as the shortest graph in the weighted time transition system, which has infinitely many configurations, infinitely many uh, nodes for any complete and idempotent samplings. So these two conditions are necessary for the sampling, but uh, 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 but these two uh, conditions are, I don't think it's something too restrictive, but uh, for example, Boolean sampling and supreme sampling and tropical sampling and some other uh, samplings satisfies these two uh, conditions. So which is the main theorem of this uh, work. So this is the local conclusion is like this. So by the, zone construction with weight, we can construct a finite graph from the weighted TTS. And by the graph analysis, the shortest distance problem for this finite graph, we obtain, we can compute the quantitative semantics. And the basic idea for the zone construction is the same as the usual reachability analysis of timed automata for qualitative semantics. So, but from here, what I show is only how to compute one value for one signal and one automaton. And there is a gap between this quantitative semantics computation and the matching value, I mean, the quantitative time and pattern matching, because we have to compute all, I mean, the value, the quantitative value for each sub signals for the quantitative time and pattern matching. However, it is known that such a uh, computation of the matching result is done by, by done by what what is called matching automata construction. This is uh, the construction from the paper on qualitative timed pattern matching with automaton. But uh, yeah, the the main idea is to add a dummy location to wait the be the beginning of the matching, and we add another fresh clock variable t climb to capture the beginning of the matching. So this is how we handle the time and pattern matching with this quantitative semantics computation. So let's go to the experiment part. So in our experiments, we use these two kinds of samplings, superinf and tropical samplings, and we used these three benchmarks from automotive domain. And the important thing for this is these benchmarks has these two paths. So for, so, so for these two uh, benchmarks, the for these two specifications, <clears throat> uh, they have these bound on the length of the matching. On the other hand, for this third specification, there's no such bound. So we call this first two sets 
specifications as bounded and this third uh, specification as unbounded. And the result of our experiment is like this. So for bounded specifications, the execution time was linear for, uh, and uh, it, we could do a monitoring about, about 1,000 entries for each, uh, for one second or for two seconds. So like we can do a monitoring of, uh, let's say, uh, two, no, 10 millisecond sampling or something like that. So I would say this is rather fast. On the other hand, we also observe that when the specification has no bound on, on the length of the matching, we have such a uh, explosion in the execution time. This is essentially because there can be infinite, I mean, the, the size of the possible combination of the beginning and the end of the matching, uh, I mean, explodes uh, exponentially. So <clears throat> yeah, this is why if the specification is unbounded, it uh, the scalability is not really good. However, uh, I believe that in practice, this bounded assumption is not something too restrictive because uh, usually we do not want to have a very long matching result because it's, I mean, for example, if we obtain a result of a matching, let's say of length one, now uh, one week, I don't know, but something too long for debugging of a system, probably it's not really useful for that uh, for some purpose. And maybe what we want is something like, I don't know, but one minute or one second or something like that. So we believe that this limitation to, I mean, scalability limitation for the this bounded and unbounded thing, it can be something, uh, I mean, uh, assuming that the, the interesting specifications is usually bounded does not sound something too unrealistic. So in conclusion, we introduced timed symbolic weighted automata, TSWA, which, which consists of timed automata with signal constraints plus weight function to define the quantitative semantics. And we gave quantitative monitoring and quantitative timed pattern matching algorithm using zone construction with weight and also the shortest pass, shortest distance algorithm. And our experiment results show the scalability for the specification with bound in the length of the matching. And I don't, uh, yeah, I suppose this is uh, practically good enough. So, uh, this is the end of my talk and uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. So first of all, I'm gonna allow you to unmute so that we can we can uh, do, oh, I forgot the English word, but we can do afterwards. So thank you, Masaki. Thank you. And do you have any question? If you have, if you have one, you can raise your hand, yes. Carlos has won. Oh, hi. Uh, hi, Masaki. It was a very Hello. nice talk. I like it very much. Um, I have two questions related with, in some sense, with clocks. Maybe I missed something, but you have only one clock, one clock that you can use to measure time, or you can have several clocks. Like you have different... several clocks. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, mm. And because I, maybe you already looked at this. Did you consider using difference bounded matrices for representing mm -hmm. the values for regions of clocks? Like they, it was to be used in um, timed automata, classical timed automata? Yep. Okay, yes. that's, that's uh, nice. so that, that. That, that. Oh, so you use that because I, as yes. I didn't he uh, hear the name, I thought that uh, so you, 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 when you said polyedra, you are using that particular representation of polyedra for clocks. Right, right. I mean, yeah. Perfect. For, for, Perfect. Yeah. This zone means the class of the, the complex polyhedra representable by uh, that uh, DBM. Yeah. If, uh, okay. At least, Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. I have another question, but I can pass the token and then ask it later. Well, I think you can actually ask the question. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Gago. Uh, the other question is about um, 
state invariants um, on the clocks, like having formulae that mm -hmm. determines the behavior of the system within the states. So again, time automata used to have state invariants, which in some sense prescribe the behavior of the system while you are like while you are spending time in a state and mm. sometimes forcing you to leave, to take transitions mm. uh, in order to guarantee that, for example, the system won't miss a deadline for taking mm. a transition and moving and evolving in time. Do you have yep. that kind of invariance? Too? Uh, no, but I suppose it's not some, something too difficult to add it at least technically. No, 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 it, it is not. If you have DBMs, it is very easy to uh, mm. enforce this, um, the satisfaction of these invariants in the, in the DBM. Uh, so, because I was thinking that, uh, do you have, um, do you force the system to evolve in order not to miss the deadlines? Uh, so some in... way, some, some form of implicit invariant forcing the system to take at least the last deadline when you have a time limit for taking like the last transition you can take? Uh, in our case, no. It is... Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, it's not really explicitly written here, but uh yeah it's because for example for this i mean uh it's, yeah yeah first of all like uh i'm sure that when we want to model a system by uh, time automaton these uh mm -hmm. invariants will be very useful but i'm not 100 percent sure uh, i mean when we write a specification in a time automaton I'm, I'm probably it's also useful but i'm not 100% sure if it is really natural to use these things. Probably it is natural, but uh, for example, in our case, we say that uh, the pattern talks about the difference of the reference values mm -hmm. and the V gets large after the change of the, the, the V ref. And uh, I don't exactly remember what timing constraints I wrote in this overshot specification, but I suppose that like uh, the, the 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 value shouldn't. I mean, we want to capture the that the difference between these. No. Uh, yeah. Just for you to consider, I, I remember because at some point I worked with time automata just for you to consider there is one example that I can find in the back of my head uh, when these invariants are useful is that to force every implementation of the model not mm. to miss deadlines because if, if not you could be so your model maybe it is not an accepted trace but you could get stalled in a state because you mm. miss the deadlines and not because you want to stay there, just because the system missed the deadline. Mm. So the model yeah. do not enforce the implementations of the model to mm. meet the deadlines, at least the, at least the last one. So that is yeah. the, the example I remember when these invariants were useful, just mm. to, force mm -hmm. the, to force you to get out of a state and do not miss at least the last train to London. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, yeah, very good question. Um, is there any question? I think I have one, if you if you don't mind. Yeah, I think I, I I'll ask one question. Um, so are there are there so so there are yeah on this slide there are two you no know, two bounded specifications and they have different bound they have different bounds right. And then right. like the length of time units. And then I guess I don't know much, but I guess if you if you make the length smaller, then the monitoring seems to get more informative. I don't know, but my my question is if you change the, the length of the time units, like that is um that is the bound of the specification, then does it affect any does it affect the 
time efficiency of the algorithm? Yes, uh, if the if the bound is longer, because uh, it we basically like uh, during the matching trials, we have to keep track of all the beginning of the, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, at this initial transition, we have, I mean, uh, yeah, it's basically, we can forget about the signal values, I mean, two old signal values, based, very roughly mm -hmm. speaking, if, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the, if the matching length, the bound is long, which means uh, we have to remember more previous information. So it, the scalability becomes worse if the matching length is okay. the possible, I mean, the bound is longer. Okay, okay. Then it's not, it sounds like a win-win, like there, there doesn't seem to be a trade-off between the length of the, the, the boundary and the execution time. And uh, mm, uh, if, if the execution, mm, oh, no. so if if the bound is longer, the execution time mm. becomes also becomes longer, and becomes longer. also memory consumption yeah. becomes also longer. While right. we obtain more information because I mean we also want co co uh, compute, I mean more uh, sub signals. I mean the the the, um, the quantity values for more sub signals. Okay. So, so as a so when you when you use the algorithm, would you like to would you would you like to have the length shorter or longer? Shorter is better for efficiency, but uh, if it is too short, maybe mm -hmm. we also miss something interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it should be. I mean, it shouldn't be too large, but uh, it, I mean, that bound should be adequately chosen for each application, I would say. Okay, okay, thank you. That was my question, Don. Thank you. So if you don't have any further questions, I think it's a good time to end this seminar today. So let's thank again, Masaki. Yeah, you can unmute you. yourselves now. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to give okay, a talk. I'm stopping recording now. <laughs>